Have you talked to uh, President Obama about this? Yes. You have. And what have you My, talked to him about? I prefer to. The views I have just expressed to you, uh, President Obama has heard from me. He has heard from you on this. I have been Do public, you think I that he can get the Congress to go with him on this? I'm told there are people think, like Lindsey Graham and, and maybe even John <clears throat> McCain who might be willing to help him with this, but only if he presents a detailed <clears throat> plan. I think that's the message that came out of Congress. <clears throat> we can't give you $80 million. There's a lot of internal home resistance to bringing these people into the country. So you come forward with a plan that makes some sense and you tell us how you're going to resolve all of these cases and do it in a way that we can support and then maybe we can move forward. So I think it was premature to ask for the money. It was premature to say we're going to give it a year to work out but then immediately ask for the money for something. Uh, John McCain has been a strong supporter from the very beginning of closing Guantanamo. But in recent days, he's been saying, you know, I haven't moved off that point, but you've got to give us a plan. This has become very, very political. And so I think uh, uh, after we have had these dueling speeches and uh, the controversy of recent days, things will settle down and the president can go off and spend some time with his staff thinking it through all the way and coming up with a plan, just as he said he would do in the speech. All right. And the one, one point I have to make, it, it really comes out of... Uh, um, some things that have been written uh, lately, and that is, in the first year after 9-11, we did everything we could to stop the possibility of another 9-11. We put in place the Patriot Act. We used enhanced interrogation techniques. I shut down, for the most part, the visa system until we could fix it. But after about a year and a half, when it looked like things were relatively secure and we were doing a better job, then we started to relax the visa system once we fixed it because we can't keep moving in that direction with putting people in jail forever without resolving their cases or not letting people come to our country. So it was natural to start shifting back to our more normal ways of doing business and dealing with the rest of the world after we had achieved a level of security. And we are more secure. I mean, uh, my, my Republican friends uh, sort of get mad when I say we need government. People want effective, responsible government. Republicans have not cut much government, even though they talk about limited government and cutting government. We've created the Department of Homeland Security, needed. We created the uh, Transportation Security Agency that guards our, our terminals and lets people go in and out, needed. We created a Director of National Intelligence, needed. The American people want to see a FEMA that takes care of us in hurricanes and tornadoes. The American people want to see federal regulators making sure we never get in the kind of financial problem we got in last year and we're working our way out of. So there is a need for government. What the American people want, not just slogans, limited government, they want effective government, government that works, and just as much as we need. But if we need it, let's have it. All right, let me ask you this. The former vice president said he had no regrets about the methods that were used, including waterboarding. He actually authorized it. Uh, he says they may have saved thousands of lives. I want to ask you two questions. Uh, do you agree with that, that uh, these techniques were effective? And number two, uh, when did you know about uh, uh, this business, John? When, when we started to examine these uh, uh, techniques, I was in some meetings where they were discussed. I was not privy to the memos that were being written or the legal opinions that were being written. Uh, I think it was unfortunate, but we had a system that kept that in a very compartmented manner. And so I was aware that these enhanced interrogation techniques were being considered. And they were judged not to be torture at the time. And when you were facing the possibility of a 9-11, you had to give some, some flexibility mm -hmm. to the CIA. But it was under the Bush administration that they stopped using these techniques mm -hmm. back in, 19, mm -hmm. in 2003. So obviously, uh, the CIA did not feel that we had anybody else in our custody that would need to have these these techniques used and uh, do you as a think result, they, they were effective? Been used? I have no idea I hear that they were I hear that they weren't you see people from the FBI who come out and say we got all that information before any of that was done 
I cannot answer that question. And the problem is I don't know what I don't know. Let me just ask you this. Jan Crawford Greenberg of ABC News reported last year that the top people in the administration, you, the Secretary of State, the Secretary of Defense, the National Security Advisor, were actually brought into meetings in the White House where these things were outlined, but you're saying you don't know at those meetings, you're saying that nothing was they, approved. They, they were outlined. We were aware that these uh, techniques were being discussed, and we were aware that legal opinions were being given that said they met the standard of the law. But over time, now that we look at it, you know, it, it, it's easy now in uh, the cold light of day to look back and say, you shouldn't have done any of that. But as Mr. Cheney has said very, very often, as it has President Bush and all of us, if we had another attack like 9-11, say on 9-11 a year later, nobody would have forgiven us for not doing everything we could. And the CIA thought we needed those kinds of techniques, but now we see that these are not appropriate. Uh, and I saw a guy on television being waterboarded yesterday, this uh, correspondent, this television commentator, and in six seconds, he thought he could take it, thought it was just like swimming. In six seconds he was screaming that he had to be you know, released from this kind of waterboarding. And remember, waterboarding comes out of our survival of evasion and escape techniques, and those were intended to be torture to show our guys what they should be subjected to. We have just a second left, Memorial Day weekend. Yes. I know this is a meaningful weekend for you. This is a, a time when we reflect on the privilege we have had as citizens to have had other citizens willing to put their lives on the line. And so let's remember all those who served their nation, remember their families, remember those who were injured and are still with us. And there'll be another wonderful Memorial Day concert this evening on the West Lawn of the Capitol, and I will be there with a number of other people to celebrate the sacrifice of our young men and women. All right. Especially those who are serving in Iraq and Afghanistan today. They are also a greatest generation. Thank you very much, General. Thank you, Thanks Bob. for being with us.